This video covers how language barriers contribute to health disparities experienced by patients with limited English proficiency, as guided by the five-minute moment for racial justice teaching framework. The five-minute moment for racial justice is a teaching framework to promote health equity and racial justice in medical education. The framework relies on a five-step approach that discusses the clinical and learning context, the current standard of a medical diagnostic or treatment, the historical roots and bias of that standard, contributions to health disparities, and steps to take to promote health equity. This framework offers educators a structured way to talk about this topic in a concise manner across commonly encountered clinical scenarios. By the end of this video, you will be able to summarize how language barriers contribute to health outcome disparities and recognize the importance of using certified interpreters when caring for patients and families with limited English proficiency. A six-year-old previously healthy female is admitted to the hospital overnight for fever, vomiting, and abdominal pain. She is accompanied by her mother and both only speak Spanish. In the morning, the bedside nurse informs the medical team that the patient has been crying all night from pain. Concerned, the learner physician says he will assess the patient. The nurse asks, would you like me to call for an interpreter? He responds, I know some conversational Spanish. I think we should be fine. This is a common scenario. How might structural factors be contributing to an equitable patient care here? These conversations are tough to have. Let's watch how two clinicians navigate this discussion. This is a good opportunity for us to talk about how we communicate with and care for patients and families with limited English proficiency. This wasn't something I learned during my training, but it's very important for us to know in order to provide equitable care for all our patients. Let's spend a few minutes talking about this. I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. Effective communication with patients and their families is essential for providing equitable care. Language barriers compromise patient safety, satisfaction, and the quality of care we deliver. But sometimes, it's hard to know when an interpreter should be used. What factors do you consider when making that decision? Well, sometimes things are so busy in the hospital that I don't feel like I have the time to ask for an interpreter. This is especially true for languages that I have some familiarity with, and I might be able to get by with what I know. I hear you. Even when interpreter services are readily available, clinicians often underutilize them. Over 43% of hospitalized patients with limited English proficiency recall speaking to a clinician without an interpreter. There are barriers to using interpreters. Time constraints, perceived inconvenience, lack of access to less common languages, and lack of standardized training for clinicians on how to work alongside interpreters. I think you're right. Using interpreter services hasn't been emphasized consistently in my training. Sometimes, I have even asked family members to interpret. You're not the only one. Many physicians report using ad hoc interpreters, such as bilingual family members, colleagues, or clinic staff who are not certified interpreters, but these practices lead to higher rates of interpretation error. Ad hoc interpreters are much more likely to omit phrases or use incorrect words that can alter meanings. This introduces the potential for worse health outcomes from miscommunication. The case of Willie Ramirez really highlights this. Willie was a healthy 18-year-old when he was brought to an emergency room in a comatose state. He was accompanied by his family, girlfriend, and his girlfriend's mother, all of whom only spoke Cuban Spanish, except his girlfriend's mother, who spoke some English. The healthcare team did not use a certified interpreter, relying instead on the girlfriend's mother. The doctor heard Willie's family using the word intoxicado. In Cuban Spanish, it means you got sick from something you ate or drank, and the family was wondering if he got food poisoning. Instead, the doctor interpreted intoxicado to mean intoxicated and treated Willie for a drug intoxication. Only two days later did doctors discover that Willie actually had a brain hemorrhage that was compressing on his brain stem, and that was the reason why he came in comatose. Emergency surgery was performed, but it was too late, and it left Willie a quadriplegic for the rest of his life. Oh my goodness! I can't believe that interpreter wasn't used with this family. 
It wasn't until 2015 that the Affordable Care Act mandated that any health care provider or health insurance company receiving federal assistance must provide patients with limited English proficiency with a qualified interpreter. Wow, that's so recent. I would feel really terrible if a medical error happened because of a language miscommunication. Willie's example is a dramatic one, but adverse events are not uncommon. Ineffective communication by not using an interpreter leads to reduced patient understanding of medical instructions and reduced provider understanding of patients' concerns. This may contribute to inappropriate, inadequate, or excessive testing, less effective management of issues like pain, longer hospital stays, and higher mortality. A 2007 study showed that 52% of adverse events, of which half resulted in physical harm to a patient, occurred due to communication errors specifically in patients with limited English proficiency. So I now know to always use an interpreter. But what should I do when bilingual family members insist on interpreting themselves and refuse a certified interpreter? I'm so glad you asked that question. I often tell families that it is our hospital policy to use a certified interpreter when we can. I also highlight the benefits of this. It allows family members to just focus on the conversation and not worry about interpreting at the same time. What about quick check-ins with the patient? Even brief updates should be conducted with a certified in-person or phone interpreter. This includes translating any written instructions we provide for the patient so they can read it in their preferred reading language. It is our responsibility to emphasize and role model the importance of effective communication as part of good clinical practice. Doing so will create a culture of equity for all our patients. So, bringing this back to our patient in the hospital today, what should we do instead? From our discussion, what I learned is, due to language barriers, Patients and families with limited English proficiency receive lower quality of care and suffer worse health outcomes. Using ad hoc interpreters, such as family members or staff, lead to higher rates of interpretation errors and can lead to worse health outcomes from miscommunication. The consistent use of certified interpreters even for brief encounters, can make a big difference in providing equitable and safe care. Given that, I would recommend that we ask for an interpreter, as the nurse suggested. Now we can guarantee transparent communication for this family. Fabulous. Let's go check in on them now and bring a medical interpreter with us. To learn more about the 5-Minute Moment for Racial Justice and other health equity resources, visit 5mmracialjustice.stanford.edu.